list of the names of those men responsible for the operation of the Bridgewater Canal for 200 years hangs in the Manchester office. In 1761, John Gilbert. In 1961, Alfred Heyman. The film you are about to see was made at the bicentenary celebrations of the Bridgewater Canal during the weekend July 15th, 16th, 1961. The canal was first opened over the section from Worsley across Barton Aqueduct to Stratford and the procession of boats on July 16 covered this same length of waterway. The phone gives a colourful picture of the boats, over 100 in number, which rallied at Worsley and of other events which took place including activities on Worsley Green and the unveiling of a plaque at Worsley Dove to commemorate the opening of the canal 200 years ago. The official procession of 50 boats, which has been filmed, represents the closing chapters to a busy weekend and will, I am sure, indicate the interest shown by the public in the celebration. Firstly, Lancashire was owned by Francis Edgerton, third Duke of Bridgewater. It lies on the Lancashire coal field and the need for an improvement in the transportation of coal to Manchester and North Cheshire in the 18th century was the reason for the canal being cut and its construction was planned and begun at Worsley. The most enjoyable and the most interesting way of reaching Worsley is by canal. The visitor glides into history, past the 18th century forge and above it the granary, past the boat repairing and building docks, then passing the arm leading to the entrance of the underground canal system. Ahead, the packet house, where a flight of stone steps no partly hidden by shrubs, once gave passengers access to the special packet boats. Through the original arch of the old road bridge into the section of the canal leading to Lee, which was the last portion to be completed, the needs of modern transport have brought into Worsley a motorway, which was opened in 1961, 200 years after the opening of the canal. The motorway bridge contrasts strongly with the bridges built in the 18th century. Much was done in the 19th century by the first Earl of Ellesmere, inheritor of the Worsley Estates, to make Worsley the picturesque place we know. One of the buildings of that period is the courthouse, where the court's lead and social functions were held. It is an attractive building, but is often thought, from its style, to be older than it really is. Worsley Old Hall, now an area office of the National Coal Board, was the manor house. Part of the timber-framed portion of the building dates from the 16th century. During the bicentenary celebrations, official parties visited the hall, which was the residence of the Canal Duke when he was in Worsley. It was at the hall that John Gilbert took up residence when he came to Worsley to take charge of the Duke's coal mines and the planning and construction of the canal. He superintended the operation of the canal, controlled the Demean farm, established a black lead pencil works and lime kilns in Worsley, was responsible for much of the engineering of the underground canals, and still found time to play a leading part in work for the welfare of the community. This room in the hall is closely associated with the early problems of the canal works and the three men who had most of the responsibility for the great undertaking. Besides the Duke of Bridgewater and John Gilbert, James Brindley came to play his part in making the canal. The men discussed, argued, and sometimes quarrelled. From humble beginnings as a millwright's apprentice in Macclesfield, Brindley's inventiveness as an engineer overcame some of the difficulties encountered in the new field of canal building, and following upon the success of his work on the Bridgewater Canal, he devoted the remainder of his life entirely to canal construction and works in other parts of the country. Now, James Brindley is known as the first of the great canal engineers in Britain. At the age of 23, Francis Edgerton, third Duke of Bridgewater, authorized the canal project. His activities in canal works led to a friendship with Josiah Wedgwood, who was interested in making a canal in the Midlands. This portrait plaque of the Duke was made at the Wedgwood Pottery in the 18th century. John Gilbert's signature remains on many documents as a reminder of his influence in the extensive commercial developments when the Industrial Revolution was given impetus by the canal.
of these cars added to the entertainment in trying to break the record time for erecting a mast. weather conditions did not prevent these varied and colourful groups, now in a final assembly, from providing excellent entertainment on the green at Worsley throughout the Saturday afternoon. There was also entertainment of another kind, perhaps the most popular of all, pleasure trips on the canal. A barge and two narrow boats converted for the accommodation of passengers gave many people their first experience of canal travel. And small self-drive motorboats gave youngsters and adults a chance of self-expression in navigation. On the very rainy Sunday morning, whilst the bicentenary commemoration service was being conducted by the vicar in the parish church of St. Mark, Worsley, the Sea Scouts were making preparations for the unveiling of a commemorative plaque by Councillor James Payne, Chairman of the Worsley Urban District Council who walked down to the chosen site after the church service. Commemorate the 
opening of the Bridgewater Canal from Worsley to Stratford in July 17, 1761. The plaque records that the canal was planned and constructed by Francis Edgerton, Sir Duke of Bridgewater, John Gilbert and James Fenwick. Ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a great pleasure to me to bear this plaque on your behalf. This bridge overlooking both the entrance to the underground canal and its junction with the surface canal in the heart of Worsley is an appropriate site to remember those pioneers of inland waterways who have given Worsley a place in history. Apart from the canal itself, this is the only memorial to the three men to whom homage is now paid. This plaque, presented by Worsley Urban District Council, commemorates the opening of the Bridgewater Canal from Worsley to Stratford, July 17, 1761, and records that the canal was planned and constructed by Francis Edgerton, 3rd Duke of Bridgewater, John Gilbert and James Brindley, July 16, 1961. Besides visitors from many parts of the kingdom, canal craft of many types had assembled to take part in the celebrations. Much work on the part of their crews had gone into turning out the boats, ship shape and Bristol fashion, for this special occasion. They had been taking up their moorings in readiness throughout the previous week, and by the Sunday they were berthed along some half mile of the canal. base at the packet steps, Mr. D.K. Redford, Manager and Secretary of the Manchester Ship Canal Company, was to take the salute as the boats passed in procession. The lifting by a cluster of balloons of a cord stretched across the canal was the signal for the procession of boats to leave Worsley. Led by Appleton, a large tug used for towing Bridgewater craft in the ship canal docks, the procession was watched by thousands of spectators lining the canal banks and from the bridges. Examples of working boats, the large grey work boat used by engineers and the small tug Bantam II had their places along with commercial craft. Barges loaded with coal, still carried by canal, Narrow boats painted in their traditional colours and with their traditional decorations. Pleasure craft now make much use of canals and representative boats of the Lim Cruising Club, the Worsley Cruising Club, the Sail Cruising Club and the Bridgewater Motorboat Club, dressed overall, added their quota to a colourful spectacle. Awards were made to the best turned out boats. In the commercial class, the winner was the Iris Abbott and the winning pleasure cruiser was the Revel Rose, owned by Mr. Geoffrey Moody of the Lim Cruising Club.
before the Manchester Ship Canal was made, the Bridgewater Canal had to be carried over the River Irwell. This was done by a three-arch stone aqueduct designed by James Brindley. It became so famous that visitors included engineers from European countries and even royalty and was described as one of the seven engineering wonders of the world at the time. In 1893, when the ship canal was constructed, Brindley's historic aqueduct was removed and replaced by the present swing aqueduct designed by Leader Williams. It revolves on a central pier and is swung full of water to avoid delay on both waterways. This is achieved by a system of gates which close the ends of the trough and the abutting ends of the canal. When the aqueduct is open for the passage of boats along the ship canal, the Bridgewater boatmen, in their vernacular, say, tanks up. The tank is 18 feet wide and 7 feet deep, carrying 6 feet of water, and the moving structure, turned by hydraulic machinery from the control tower on the central pier, weighs 1,450 tons, including 800 tons of water. Barton Aqueduct solves an unusual problem in an ingenious way and is a unique example of engineering skill. It has become as famous as the original aqueduct. Beyond the aqueduct, the procession continued towards its destination, Stretford, passing Barton Power Station, to which coal is carried by canal, and then on through the great industrial estate of Trafford Park, where a considerable tonnage of goods is carried on the waterway. council chairman of the townships through which the Worsley to Stretford length of the canal passes had sailed along with officials and distinguished visitors in the procession. At Stretford they were headed by the pipe band of the Scots Guards Association and made their way to the platform where trophies for the successful boats and bulkhead plaques as a permanent token were presented to the owners of each craft taking part in the celebration. introduce to you to the Mayor of Stratford, Councillor W. Barry and his lady. We also have supporting him the Chairman of the Worsley UDC, Councillor Payne and his lady. And on my right, the Mayor of Eccles, Alderman Benson and the Mayoress, Mrs. Fallon. Mr. Heyman, Your Worships, Alderman Councillors, ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow, as most of you will know, marks the 200th anniversary at the opening of the Bridgewater Canal on July the 17th, 1761. <laughs>
So we come to the end of the events recorded, and from the offices of the Bridgewater Canal in Manchester, the former residence of the Duke of Bridgewater, it is appropriate that I should now pay tribute to those of my staff who have played such an active part in the arrangements and to all those friends who have readily come to our aid. Not overlooking Mr. Frank Molyneux, who has given a worthy commentary on the film. Above all, it is with grateful appreciation I acknowledge the fine efforts of the Charlton Cine Club in recording in pictorial form for posterity some of the highlights of what to many enthusiasts will long remain a memorable occasion.